welcome to the uh, discussion on amortization of a bond discount. Uh, in this example, uh, these are the facts. On July 1st, 2012, Sagittarius Satellites issued 4,500,000 face value, 9% 10-year bonds at 4219600 This price resulted in an effective interest rate of 10% on the bonds. Sagittarius uses an effective interest method to amortize the bond premium or discount. The bonds pay semi-annual interest July 1st and January 1st. So uh, the first thing we have to do is prepare the journal entry to record the issuance of the bonds. Now we know that because the face value is greater than the uh, selling price that we're going to be selling it at a discount. And another way you can look at this is we, uh, Sagittarius is offering 9% interest. However, in the marketplace, buyers could buy bonds of comparable risk uh, and er, of, of other companies and earn 10%. So we're offering 9, they could get 10% on other companies' bonds, so we have to discount the price of our bonds so that uh, people will buy them. And when all is said and done, this price of four million two hundred nineteen thousand six hundred is uh, the, the the investors will be getting ten percent on their investment, and we will be paying ten percent. Uh, and the reason that it works out that way is we're going to be paying them nine percent of four million five hundred, but they only gave us. Four million two hundred nineteen dollars and six hundred dollars. So uh, the interest payment is actually going to end up being ten percent for them. So the journal entry to record the bonds will be a debit to cash of for whatever we sold it for. So four two one nine six hundred. And the credit, uh, actually, we have another debit. Uh, we have discount on bonds payable. And that is going to be for the difference between the 45, uh, 4,500, and what we sold them for. So that's 280,400. And our credit will be. Bonds payable and bonds payable is always for the face amount of the bond. The next requirement is to prepare an amortization table through December 31st, 2013, which is three interest periods. So here's our table. And uh, the way we set it up is uh, in a table because it makes it much, much easier to follow uh, if we do that. And one of the points I want to make is sometimes you're tempted to just kind of throw some numbers on a piece of paper to try and figure this out. It's, it's much better to do a formal table because from here we're going to be able to do our journal entries. Uh, now, the initial, uh, at the issue date, the initial carrying value is the same as our sales price. And you might want to make a little note um, that this initial carrying value is the sales price, uh, just because uh, it might be helpful for you uh, to see that. 
And I want to be clear that this is just the initial sales price. Okay, so on the uh, issue date, our unamortized discount was 280400 Now, we're going to be paying interest and um, amortizing this discount. So the interest that we're going to pay is always, always, always the stated rate times the face rate. So if we come back here, our stated rate was 9%, which would be 4.5% annually times the face value. So this initial, um, I always like to put in here, it's 4.5%. Okay. Um, so we're going to take, I'm going to do this with a formula. It equals 4.5%, which would be 0.05, oops, 0.045 times four thousand five hundred okay and that is going to stay the same that's not going to change so I can just copy this into every one of the interest payment dates because that's not going to change in order to calculate our interest expense uh, we are going to use the ten percent which was the effective rate it's semi-annual, so it's 5% every six months. So we take 5% times the uh, carrying value. So 5% times 42196 uh, is 210980. The difference between these two is the amount of the discount that we're going to amortize which is 8,480. So our discount uh, was 280,400. We just amortized 8,480. So we take uh, D minus C, uh, column D minus column C, and that's going to give us 271,920. So this is the unamortized discount. By the time we're done with this bond, this will uh, the unamortized discount will be zero because we'll amortize all of it. Now the carrying value can be calculated um, simply by taking the face value minus the balance in column D. So 4500 minus 271 gives you 4228080. Oh, now one thing you should know is there's another way to look at this. You can take whatever the previous carrying value was, 4219.6, and add 271 to it. Actually, sorry, you're not adding 271, you're adding uh, 8480, the amount of the discount. Because when this bond is fully amortized, at the end, when it matures, this carrying value amount has got to end up being 4500000 So this is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger by the amount of the discount that we amortized each period. So the next period, we take 5% times 4228 and we get 211404 difference between these two equals 8904. The uh, unamortized discount, we take 271,920 minus 8904, we get 263,016, and then we add the same amount, the 8904 to the 4228, or Take 45, uh, 4,500 and subtract 
the unamortized discount. Either way, you're going to get 4236984. All right, then the last pair that we're going to do is 5% times 4236984. And that's 2811849. The difference between A and B here is 93.49. So the unamortized discount goes down by that same amount, 253.667. And that leaves us with a carrying value, 4,246,333. Now, you'll notice that our interest expense is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the discount is also getting uh, larger and larger and, and larger. Um, and the reason the interest expense is getting bigger is because it's based on the carrying value. And the carrying value is increasing. So this interest to be paid is going to be what we write the check for to our investors. It's going to be a credit to cash. The interest expense recorded is going to be a debit to interest uh, expense. And uh, this discount is going to be a credit to the discount account because it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And it was originally uh, a debit balance. So let's do the journal entry that we would do on December 31st. Now what you have to remember is we pay interest on J January 1st and July 1st. Well, since on, the, on December 31st of 2012, we basically have, have had use of the uh, investor's money for six months. We need to accrue six months' worth of interest because we're going to be paying it the next day on January 1st. So the journal entry to accrue this interest would be debit interest expense. And this is the amount that we take right off of the table, uh, which is 210980. So 210980. And we also have to debit the discount account. Let me get my spelling right there. Discount on bonds payable. Now the amount that we're going to debit it is right off the chart um, and I'm using the one date of January 1st because I'm doing this the day before on the 31st of 2012 so I'm going to amortize 8,480 so that is my debit and my credit will be to cash for 202,500 Oops. Now, uh, the next journal entry that we're to do is the journal entry to record the payment of interest and the amortization of the discount on July 1st, 2013, assuming that no interest was accrued on June 30th. So this is just a straight up interest payment. Oh, you know what? I made a little error here. This was supposed to be interest payable. And maybe, whoops, P-A-Y-A-B-L-A. -A. Uh, the reason being is I'm going to pay that the next day. So now our next interest payment will be on July 1st. Okay. So uh, I can tell you right now, the cash is going to be 202500 That's going to be... Uh, always our cash payment. But the interest expense and the discount uh, numbers have to come from our table. So on July 1st, 2013, interest expense is 211404 and the discount is 8904. So let's put that in here 8904. And this amount was 211404. All right, uh, last one says prepare the journal entry to record the accrual 
of interest and amortization of the discount on December 31st. So again, it's going to look just like this. It's the beauty of doing this in Excel. You can just copy. But let's get our numbers. Um, interest payable doesn't change, but the interest expense and the discount does. So last one, it's 211849 and 9349. So this is 9349 and this is 211849. And I see I've made a mistake consistently on, um, on this. So this is good. You guys get to see all of these were supposed to be credits. Um, uh, it doesn't make sense, actually. Uh, I mean, my journal entry is not balanced uh, right here. You can see this is 218, this is 202. So I need to make every single one of those credits. And again, this is the beauty of Excel. You can do it very quickly. All right, so now my journal entries are balanced. And I want to insert a journal entry here just uh, in case. Um, the, the journal entry that you would make on January 1st of this last period, uh, like the next day, uh, and actually... What day is that? Yeah, one one fourteen. I just want to make sure you understand how to do that. So one one fourteen. Oh, I can see I didn't leave myself enough room here. Is you're gonna debit this interest payable uh, right here? And you're going to credit cash for 202500 Okay. And you would have made that uh, also uh, on January 1st of 2013. Lastly, the balance sheet at 12-31-2013 is going to look, this is a partial balance sheet, You'll show your long-term liabilities, and then you'll show your bonds payable at the full um, face value amount, because that is what you're going to have to pay back when the bonds mature, less the discount. Now, what is the balance in the discount account uh, on December 31st? Well, this is the unamortized discount on January 1st, 2014, which is one day later than this balance sheet. So this is the number um, that we've got uh, in our discount account. So the net of that is exactly what we have in our carrying amount right there. So that is what the balance sheet will look like. So at the end of every... Uh, period or, you know, every year for sure, um, the net amount has to equal the carrying value.